Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Children's Liturgy at St. Gabriel's Catholic Church in Charlotte. Today, boys and girls, it's the fifth Sunday of Lent, and it's windy out here. So we are getting so very close to Holy Week. Wow. Get excited because we get to learn so many things. And maybe as we get closer, Jesus won't have to suffer so much for us. So today, boys and girls, we are going to talk about the harvest because in the spring you plant things and it gets exciting, right? We're going to talk about a tomato. One beautiful tomato. Now watch, boys and girls. If I were to cut this tomato in half, what would I see? Any idea? What would be in there? Should we, should we cut it and find out? Let's do it. I'm going to take a knife that only moms and dads use, and I'm going to cut this tomato in half for us. I did it. Lots and lots and lots of seeds in a tomato are seeds. And a lot of good fruit, right? A lot to eat in there, but there's a lot of seeds. And tomatoes, you can eat the seeds. But let's take one seed. Mmm, there we go. They're slippery. <gasps> one little seed. Now, if I put that seed in my pocket, I'm going to put it in my pocket. What would happen? It would just stay a seed. It would dry up, shrivel up, and a seed in my pocket would just stay a seed. There it is. Now, boys and girls, what if I would take that seed and plant it in a pot? Do you think something different would happen? Let's do it. In the pot it goes, dig down in there, put the dirt over it and cover it. Hmm, I did something different with the seed. Now, when I put that seed in the pot and covered it with dirt, looks like the seed's in the pot and it looks like it's dead and it's gone, completely gone. It's disappeared, right? But after a while, something amazing happens, boys and girls. What happens? Think, I'm not going to tell you. I know you know it. You're right. The seed grows. It grows into a plant a big plant and it gets bigger and bigger and it makes many, many seeds. Now, can anyone guess how many seeds are in a tomato like this? Any guess? Everybody in your family, why don't you pause the video and everybody guess, all right? I'll wait. The answer is 50 to 200. I wonder who was closest in your house. Figure that out. 50 to 200 seeds are in each tomato. Now, from one tomato seed, you get a plant that has lots of tomatoes. And between 50 and 200 seeds in each tomato, if you've grown tomatoes before, you might get 10 or 20 or 30 tomatoes off of one vine. So imagine how many seeds that is. Talk about it. It'd be a lot, wouldn't it? So from one, one little seed that we just planted in this pot, one little seed, you could get thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds. Wow. Now, here's the problem. That only happens when one seed seems to die because it's planted in the ground. And that one seed that died came back to life in the dirt. And what did it do? It made lots and lots of seeds, which made lots and lots of tomatoes, which made lots and lots of food for everyone, right? So, who does that seem like? What does that seem like? In the Bible, you're right. Jesus said, he is like a seed. Listen to what he says. Let's read the gospel because I think we're going to learn a little bit more about a seed and what Jesus is trying to teach us in his parable. Ready? Everyone. I think about you, make a cross. I 
speak about you, I almost forgot, and make another cross, I keep you in my heart. Boys and girls, everybody, hands are in her lap, and we're ready to listen to the story, right? This gospel was written by John. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many, many seeds. The gospel of the Lord. And you say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, boys and girls, Jesus was not talking about wheat or a tomato seed, right? He was talking about himself. What did he do for us? I think you know that. Like a seed is buried in the ground, Jesus was going to be killed and buried. That's what we remember at Easter, right? Because that's what happened. Then, like a seed that died, what happens to Jesus? Yes, you are right. Jesus dying on that cross for us caused something amazing to happen. Just like the seed that made many seeds come to life, that one seed made lots and lots and lots come to life. Jesus brings all of us to life, right? Not just hundreds of people. He brings millions and millions and millions of people to life every day. And what does he do? He trusts us and he gives us life and he died for us. Now, everyone who trusts in Jesus will have eternal life and live with him forever in heaven. Hmm, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? So boys and girls, did you hear that? Let's listen again. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will have eternal life and live with him forever in heaven. Boys and girls, at harvest time, which is in the spring and the fall, we have lots to be thankful for. All the seeds that grow to give us food and, and we get to eat that. But it's also about Jesus. He gives his life to us. And then it tells us, trust him. He's there for us and he's taking care of us every single day. Now, boys and girls, Lent. A lot of times people talk about giving something up during Lent. And that's to show Jesus that we know he suffered for us and we're going to suffer a little for him. So you can give things up and you can think about others. Now, sometimes it's hard to give something up, especially if you do it every single day for 40 days. But think about this, boys and girls. We give up wood. We give up trees so that we can have pencils, right? And paper. You know, if we didn't have pencils and paper, but we had to give up that tree. Hmm. Now, to have food, we have to give up certain plants and we have to replant that. To have furniture, all the furniture that's made out of wood. Again, we gave up beautiful trees. So you think about this. We give up things all the time. Jesus gave up so much for us. What can we do? What can we do? I sometimes love WWJD, especially during this time. What would Jesus do? What can we do to follow in his footsteps? How is he taking care of us? Let us think about what we can do to take care of him. Can we give up something or can we do something for someone this week? Just to let Jesus know we know how he suffered on that cross for us. Give up a toy for your brother. Let him play with it so that he doesn't cry and mom has a little free time. Give up some sugar. Give up your favorite dessert. Maybe don't eat dessert at all. Give up chocolate. Now, when we give up something, we're thinking, hey, Jesus gave up his life for us. I can do something little. Now, if you don't give something up, that's okay. Maybe you want to do something good. Maybe we want to do something for someone. But doing something good for someone, <laughs> it's hard. You might have to give up some time. You might have to give up some money, right? 
but you could do something good for someone. I know a lot of you are artists. You sit down and take your paper and pencil and draw some pictures, make some cards, and send cheer to maybe some of your older neighbors. Maybe mom could drop some beautiful pictures off at a nursing home so that they can see lovely pictures when they're getting old and they're in a nursing home and, and, and they'd like to see some beautiful colors this spring. So you help others, you're helping yourself because make a heart, guess what? You're cleaning that heart and you're giving it to just for Jesus so that he knows you're listening and you're trying very hard. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about before we end this Sunday. Jesus lost his life so that our sins would be forgiven, right? Boy, that's pretty big. But what he told his disciples over and over and over, and he tells us, don't hold on to things so tightly. If you're so worried about your Lego set, don't worry so much about things. Worry about your heart. Worry about your mind thinking about Jesus. Sometimes if you could help tell mom, set an alarm, mom, we're going to pray or talk to Jesus at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That way we get three times to talk to Jesus every day. And we just ask him, hey, help us make it easier to follow you. So then that way we'll be good disciples. So boys and girls, we're in the fifth week of Lent. You have a few more to go and Holy Week's coming. So get ready to see how that little seed out of that tomato turned into big stuff. And that's what Jesus did for us. So think, pray, and watch the beautiful words that come out of your mouth this week. Have a blessed day.